Roe v. Wade is an American film drama which highlights the 1973 Supreme Court decision which essentially allowed abortions to be legal here in America. It is written and directed and even acted by Nick Loeb. Also, Kathy Allen was part of that as well in terms of directing and writing. And it stars an Academy Award winning actor and many, many other conservatives that you, I'm sure, will be familiar with and will be surprised to see in this film. Lots of cameos. The film was actually very, very good. I'm going to talk about that in this next conservative take. So if you're unfamiliar with the way I do my movie reviews, then please click this link right here and that will explain everything you need to know. Also, if you're mindful of spoilers, there will be a spoiler section in this particular video that you can skip past. We'll make a note of it on the screen so you won't have to worry about being spoiled by anything you hear. So for the plot of the movie, I'm going to kind of leave that vague until I get to my conservative take and my spoiler section. So I'm going to leave it there. However, I'm going to let you know right now that it's going to be a timeline leading up to the events of the 1973 January 22nd Supreme Court decision, which again allowed abortions to be legal in this country. And so one thing you should know going into it is that there's a lot of people in this film, a lot of talent, a lot of cameos, a lot of conservatives who just got their shot to take some screen time. And it's pretty interesting. I'll tell you my assessment on that later on, but it really deals with the whole dichotomy of the political nature of what happened leading up to it. You had factions that didn't want it to happen. You had factions that did want it to happen and they're colliding. You had different cultures from different areas of the country like Texas and New York where you just didn't know where it was going to go and it was pretty close to going the other way. In terms of the cast, it has probably the biggest cast that I've seen in a film for a conservative nature like this and they're from all over the place. In fact, it has John Voight who won an Academy Award it has people like Tommy Lahren, Milo Yiannopoulos, Steve Gutenberg as a, as a cameo, Mike Lindell as a cameo. You have people like Joy Lawrence, Robert Davey as William Brennan, Wade Williams as William Rehnquist, and Stacey Dash as Milford Jefferson. And due to the film's timeline narrative, I'm going to give this film a six for the story and the depth. Okay, so as you can imagine, the emotional impact on this film is going to be pretty high because it's the subject matter, right? So this film is going to be an eight for that. And I feel myself being pulled into things that I wasn't thinking that I would be emotional to. Obviously, the subject matter, obviously the women, obviously the corruption. But really, I think the thing to me that really was the most impactful was the relationship to what we're seeing today and how the media manipulates and how people are lied to and how it gets spread out as a narrative, as a mantra. And then next thing you know, huge decisions are being made and thousands, even millions of lives are lost because of it. And so that to me is my emotional impact for this film. And I think you should watch it with that in mind. All right, so for the category of intangibles, I'm gonna give it a 10 because there's so much stuff to talk about this film. The cast was huge. So many different people in there. The acting at the highest levels were very good, like Davey and of course, John Voight. Those guys are great. You know, John Voight has an Academy Award. In fact, this film at the top end of the acting was very, very good. There's some lacking in some acting going on, but they aren't on the screen that much, so it's not that distracting. The colors were muted, which I think was fine for this type of subject matter, like an earth tone, browns, reds, that kind of thing, which really made it seem like a period piece, which in a lot of ways it was, I mean, 1973, but it just seemed older than it was. And I think also the narration of it was pretty good because the, the commentator was actually narrating this through almost like a, almost like a film noir type deal where he's kind of talking through the whole thing and kind of giving you his perspective unapologetic all the way through. I'll talk about more of that at the end and my conservative take spoiler section. All right, for the category of watchability, it's going to be an eight because mainly, well, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, there's some parts of this film I just don't like and it's from a technical standpoint. The subject matter is, 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 is great and that's why it's so high and I don't want to seem like I'm being a downer here, but I just can't avoid the technical merits of the film. It just doesn't hold up in a lot of areas. However, that does not mean you shouldn't watch it. It, it just, just, that's just me. That's just how I'm rolling here, but it's a really good film. And the information in this was what makes it incredibly watchable. In fact, it's, it's, you're not going to find this kind of information anywhere. I mean, I was just flabbergasted when it brought the whole thing together, which again, I'll tell you in the spoiler section, all of that. And it's just to me insane of what people were able to get away with 
and what the ramifications was to this country and to our society as a result of that. So, okay, so for my overall score of the film, I'm going to give it a seven. If you watch my link above on my movie rating scores, you'll see why I choose films for that particular category. And so I'm going to talk about more of this, a lot more of this in my conservative take. So stand by. Okay, so now we enter into my conservative take, and this is going to be this spoiler section. And so if you don't want to know anything about the film technically or emotionally or plot wise, then just fast forward to the next section, which is the final take, and then you can go ahead and go from there. This film is a timeline of the Roe v. Wade courtroom decision by the Supreme Court, which occurred on January 22nd, 1973. Now, the first thing I want to say is this. Nick Loeb is the director of this and Kathy Allen also helped write it. He was the main guy who was actually ended up being the person who came out and did the, the short film called The Silent Scream. So the whole time he is a person who is a doctor who got his girlfriend pregnant and then she couldn't have an abortion. So he actually performed the abortion on her. And then from that point, he said, this should never happen again to any other woman. So he led a campaign to go and make abortion legal in America. It was his campaign. And so he went from that to making the film, The Silent Scream, which was a film, as if you know anything about this, I watched it when I was a kid growing up, it terrified me. It was a film about a baby being tortured during an abortion. And yes, so this is the same guy. So there's obviously a story arc here, very similar to Unplanned. And it's almost like these films bookmark each other. I would even recommend watching this film first and then turn around and watch Unplanned second. And then while you're at it, go ahead and watch Gosnell just for, you know, just for more information to get you even madder. So, but back to this particular film. So he's doing all of this stuff. And the key thing I want to mention in this conservative take is the fact of how he lied to everyone about statistics, about doctors, about everything he could to get this to happen. He got some unscrupulous lawyers on his team and they worked together. They worked the system. They worked with people within the clergy, even with rabbis to essentially make this happen, to put the will of the American people into the consciousness of being pro choice. They even came up with that aspect of it being pro choice all those lines, those mantras you hear all the time, my body, my choice, all that stuff was just made up just to make it sound better. They put it into the media, into shows like Maud, into other programming, slowly but surely, so people could finally get used to being in a society where it's okay for a mother to kill her unborn baby. And so that's the whole thing. So then you had the other side of that. You had a priest and you had Stacey Dash's character who eventually uh, convinced Ronald Reagan to be pro-life. And really speaking of Reagan, he set the whole Republican party to be a pro-life party. It was his doing that did that. So this person who Stacey Dash is playing is named Milford Jefferson. This person was instrumental in that happening and refashioning the conservative party to be a pro-life party. So I could go more and more on this. It's just a really powerful film in the sense that the information that I'm watching, I can't believe that this is a true story. There's also a cameo with Alveda King, who is Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, and also John Snyder. So there is a lot of things to look at this film, and I think it's definitely worth your time and effort to watch. In fact, bring your families and friends together, share this film because you will not find this kind of information in this type of movie outside of a documentary. Also, I will say they really hit Planned Parenthood pretty, pretty hard. They showed Margaret Sanger look like she was on her deathbed, showed her at a Klan rally behind a burning cross, which of course they deny that ever happened. But they have quotes at the end of the movie, which basically substantiate that. So there's just a lot of stuff here. It's just really, really aggravating to know that the same thing is going on today that lies are being told, narratives are being generated, and because of that, people are dying. In this case, people are dying by the millions. And so I have a counter here, which shows during the length of this video, how many aborted babies have happened just from the taping of this particular video. And so it's just astonishing. I'll leave links to all this stuff below. You can check out for yourself. But yes, this movie is fantastic. It's not family friendly in some ways because they do show an aborted fetus. I don't know if it's a real imagery or it looked real to me. It was just horrifying. And so, and at the end, of course, there's a transformation where he decides this is not the right thing to do. And now I'm going to 
being activists on the other side, which is a fascinating dichotomy for a person who's an atheist starting out. So for the final score in this film and my final take, it's gonna be a 15 out of 20. It's gonna give it a 3.5 star rating and a go for this film. Normally a film like this, with this kind of subject matter, I'd give it a go with caution, but it's PG-13, so you know going in, there is no content in here that should be egregious to any person who is a conservative or a Christian or anything like that. It's not an overly evangelical film. In fact, it's not at all. It just tells you don't kill unborn babies. And yeah, and so it just have a strong messaging at the end as well. It's very emotional. So depending on your sensibilities, it may depend on whether or not you want to really go see it yourself. But I think the information alone is worth seeing. But the important thing is this, what do you think? Do you plan on seeing Roe v. Wade? If you do, let me know in the comments below. Also, I'll leave links to how to go see it. It's online, on demand, as we speak. Also, what are your thoughts on Roe v. Wade? What do you think about the implications of having the media have such a huge power base on the public decision, which ultimately led to the way it rolled out? I'm curious to know what you think. And with that, please check out some content that we have right here.